you morning and welcome to worship in St. Mark's Newton Art. My name is Peter Hilton. And as we begin our worship this morning, let's greet each other in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I wonder if you can remember what your last birthday cake looked like. In our house, Gemma makes all our birthday cakes and then she decorates them. And each year, the girls will give her a different commission, depending on what it is they are into. And then the, their friends see the cakes that Gemma makes and sometimes ask Gemma to make a cake for their birthday too. So over the years, Gemma has been asked to make all sorts of cakes, from rainbow coloured cakes to cakes in the shape of a measuring tape, Lego, and even a Toy Story cake. Each new cake request is a new commission. A commission is a special task or a job to do. Oh, the overall mission that Gemma has is always the same, to make a tasty cake that looks really good. But the details are each time change. The commission is unique to the cake. In today's service, we're looking at that ending of our church service. When we are sent out, when we are commissioned to go into the world and do God's work. Sometimes we refer to this as the Great Commission. God calling each of us to go and to do a special job for him. But as well as that Great Commission, we all have a unique commission to do. And we're going to be thinking of that unique commission as we look at Acts chapter 13 and how God commissioned certain people to do a special task for a particular time. So let's begin by inviting God into our midst as we explore that exciting commission in our lives today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you know us each by name. You have called us by name to serve you in the world. Help us, we pray, to understand and to follow the commission that you have for each of our lives. We pray this through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
take a moment now to reflect on the week gone by, to bring to mind those things that we have done wrong, those people that we've spoken ill to and even perhaps spoken ill of, those moments when we've been lacking in grace but maybe full of anger. As we reflect on the week gone by, let's take the opportunity to confess to God in the sure and certain confidence of his love and mercy and his grace, those things which come to mind now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we find peace with God, we take the opportunity to share that peace with one another. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God by, in one body by the cross. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We now enter that part of our service when we proclaim and receive God's word. Our reading and our psalm look at the commission of God in our lives. 
We begin with our psalm, which is Psalm 138. Please join with me in the words in bold. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear that you ha- what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand to save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 1. Now the church at Antioch. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius from Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them to. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
church I attended when I was growing up was across the road from a much larger church, no less than the Roman Catholic Cathedral in Derry. They had a mechanical set of bells which rang at 12 noon every day, including Sundays. And because they were so close, we could hear the bells when we were inside our church having our service. And when they rang on the stroke of noon, our own service was usually coming to an end. But if we were still in our pews when the bells rang, it was noted and there would be comments made. Whereas church bells are usually a sign for people to come to church, for our church they were a sign it was time to leave. At the beginning of this series on our church worship, what we do on a Sunday, and how it makes a difference to the rest of the week, we looked at how we gather the gathering of God's people is the first section in our service. But as important as it is to come to church, how we leave church is just as important. And so the last section in our services has a title, Going Out as God's People. Let's take a moment to think of what it's like for us when we leave church. For some, perhaps many of us, there's a sense of relief. Thank goodness that's over. I thought that sermon was never going to end. It's as if we each have our own set of imaginary bells which ring to tell us it's about time to go. Even before the service has ended, we're on the starting blocks, ready to run, bags packed, glasses put away, books closed. And then we're out in the fresh air, released from our pews, a chance to catch up with conversation, perhaps the same conversation we were having before it was interrupted by the church service. Or maybe there's no time for chat and we're straight to the car, off for Sunday papers, out to lunch or back home to make lunch, whatever. Our world begins to turn again after it has been put on hold for church. Forgive me if I seem unfair, but I do wonder if we should be giving more thought as we leave church to what we've just all been doing, to the uniquely special activity of worshipping God. Right from the moment we step into the building, gathering together with those who are beloved of God and loved by us, taking part in that very intimate act of confessing our sins to God and to one another, sharing God's peace, 
hearing his word proclaimed in our midst, crying out in prayer for our needs and the needs of the world to Almighty God who is powerful enough to shake the very earth and singing words of praise, adoration and thanksgiving in honour to him. The truth is, in that time, in what is a matter of minutes, even if we feel there are too many minutes, in that time something is happening that should mean that we are not the same people when we go out as we were when we came in, when we gathered. Going out at the end of worship is just as important as gathering to worship. And there's a clue to this in the titles of those two sections of the service. We begin with the gathering of God's people. We don't simply gather as those with a common interest, not even as those who know each other. We don't gather on our own terms or in our own strength. We gather because God calls us the community of his people. From the experiences of the past week with its ups and downs, our Heavenly Father gathers us like a mother hen gathering her chicks under her wing. Out of the hardship or heartache of our lives, he brings us into his presence, drawing us by his love, gathering us. And even if we feel like we don't want to come, we still do because we are called, we are drawn. And by the end of our service, we are ready to go out as God's people, forgiven, healed, refreshed, inspired, encouraged, corrected, built up, put back together again to God's glory, to face the world as God's people. If we had lost sight of who we are by the time we came to church, God reminds us and shows us who we are, his people, dearly loved by him in Christ. So rather than a sigh of relief that the service is over and a surge of thoughts about Sunday lunch or whatever, we go out with a spring in our step because of God's restoring work in us. But we don't simply go out to live as we wish, to go back to what we were before, to live for what we want. We go out as God's people. We go out, as we say in the words of dismissal, in the name of Christ to love and serve the Lord. We go as those who are commissioned. My dictionary tells me that a commission, as in the case of commissioned officers in the armed services, has to do with the, the conferring of authority by way of a warrant, the entrusting of authority and the empowering of someone for active service. And in the armed services, the commission comes from no less than Her Majesty the Queen. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus sends his disciples, his followers, out into the world for a specific task. He commissions them. And his words are known as the Great Commission because Jesus, who grants it, has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And the task, that is the task of making disciples, is done in his name. His disciples can be in no doubt that their commission carries weight, even when the authority of Jesus and Jesus himself is rejected by the world. We receive Jesus' commission at our baptism to live as disciples of Christ, to fight the good fight, to finish the race, to keep the faith, to confess Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and to look for his coming in glory. Jesus deems us worthy of this task, of fulfilling this responsibility for his disciples. So as we go out as God's people, we go with that commission before us, ringing in our ears, to perform a task, a duty given to us 
by Jesus. And we go to do it in his name, with his authority. But how we fulfill our commission will look different for each one of us. At Antioch, Barnabas and Saul were sent out to do the task the Holy Spirit had called them to. It was a specific task and it would take them on the first of three journeys into Turkey and Greece and a final journey to Rome. These are the journeys that make up the book of Acts. How do we discover what God is calling us to do, what Jesus has commissioned us to do? We discover it by the Holy Spirit through the church. God, the Holy Spirit, revealed his will to the church at Antioch, that is, God's people who were gathered there. The Spirit tells the church, set apart for me Saul and Barnabas for the work to which I have called them. They are sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. But in verse 3, we read that in obedience to what the Spirit says, the church lays their hands on them and sends them off. So there is a call by the Holy Spirit which directs the church to fulfill its commission. And the church confirms that call by doing what the Holy Spirit directs them to do. Last week we gathered at Nendrum for the ordination of Stephen Doherty and Rory Blake Knox who leads the church plant at Money Ray. The bishop asked each of them if they believe that God has called them to the work of a presbyter or priest in his church. Then the bishop asked the people who were there as the church if it was their will that Stephen and Rory be ordained. And only then does the ordination take place. In the same way, the church uh, is always gathered for a baptism or a confirmation to hear and follow the directing of the Holy Spirit. It's a special thing when someone is ordained or commissioned to go overseas, for instance, as a missionary. But that calling and commissioning happen each time we gather. At Antioch, the Holy Spirit reveals his will while the church is worshipping. The Holy Spirit says to them in their worship time, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Worship is never a passive thing, something that just happens or we make happen. It is more than simply singing and praying and reading God's word. When we gather for worship, sometimes we will say aloud, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. And when we go out at the end of our worship, in the words of one of the communion prayers, we ask God to send us out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to his praise and glory. In our worship, we recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit who called the church at Antioch to set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work to which he was calling them. The same spirit who called Stephen and Rory to the work of presbyters in God's church. The same spirit who called Claire Holmes to Paraguay with the South American Mission Society or Adam and Laura Gordon to Uganda with Engineering Mission Ministries International. So what is the Spirit calling us to do in this very time of worship as he is with us? When we go out as God's people, we go out ready to serve. We go out equipped and empowered by the Spirit. And the time we spend in worship is how the Spirit prepares us, inspires us, confirms us to do that, to fulfill our commission. Are we open to the Spirit's presence here and now? 
so that we can go out as God's people to do what we have been commissioned to do. There's a church in our diocese with a very special notice board. It's special because it has writing on both sides. On one side, uh, it looks out onto a busy road to make the world aware that the church is here. On the other side, it has words to make the church aware that the world is here. And on that side, it says this, the worship is over, the service begins. As we switch off our computer or DVD player at the end of this time of worship, the service begins. The Holy Spirit who is with us in our worship sends us out as God's people to fulfill the task to which we have been called, the great commission given by Jesus in his name with all authority. In a moment, we're going to invite you to join in a prayer from the Methodist tradition, the covenant prayer in which we give ourselves to God's service. It's a powerful prayer of rededication and commitment to the covenant God makes with us through the blood of Jesus and through which we are commissioned to go out and to serve him. So as we listen to this next hymn, let's prepare to say that prayer together and let's be open to what the Spirit is saying to us as the people of God.
as we hear and think and ponder today the call of God to follow him into the world, to devote our lives to his service and to act our, out our special commission that he has called us to. We now have an opportunity to respond and to pray a prayer of commitment. I invite you to pray with me the covenant prayer. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. In our prayers of intercession today, we pray for the outworking of the Great Commission, that it would become a reality in our church and in our world today. Loving God, you call us all to the task of mission, to make known the good news of Jesus, to proclaim the gospel to all we meet through word and deed. Teach us what that means so we will be ready to fulfill that calling when the opportunity arises. Grant wisdom, guidance and inspiration so that many will hear and respond. Loving God, you call some to be evangelists and ministers, preachers, teachers and pastors. Bless in particular our church, our rector Chris and our ministry team here, the Glen Community Church and Reverend Stephen. Be with ministers across our diocese and bless our bishop David. Arm these your servants with both compassion and power so that many will hear and respond. You call others to more specialised ministries, working in industry or shops, prisons or hospitals, the armed forces, sport, offices, youth work, charities and care homes. Grant your wisdom, guidance and inspiration to them so that many will hear and respond. You call others again to missionary service either at home or overseas, to share the gospel through their preaching and teaching, or through offering practical skills as a testimony to the love and compassion of Christ. We think in particular of Adam and Laura, Beth and Sophie Gordon, asking that you would bless them as they spend some time at home. We pray too for those many missionary organizations that we as a church support. Grant your wisdom, guidance and inspiration so that many will hear us and respond. In our prayers, we bring before you the needs and the worries of our time. We remember our children and teachers as they return to school over the next weeks. We pray for all those young people who have received or were due to receive exam results. We pray for all those young people preparing to start a new school or start back to school. Be with them, Lord, we pray. We pray too for all those who are fearful and anxious at this time, those who are facing illness and those who are facing loss. We remember before you, Lord, in particular, the families of Cyril Lavery and Maureen Carson following their sad passing 
in the week gone by. We pray that you would surround them with your love and your compassion and comfort at this time. And we bring before you, God, in the silence of our hearts, those pains and those fears which we bear today. And as we bring our prayers to you, Lord, we offer you the week ahead. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we seek your Spirit's guidance on our lives as we seek to follow your great commission. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us in all the cares and occupations of our daily life. That we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we're always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together the collect for this week. O God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your glorious promises and be made partakers in your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude and draw our prayers together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus bid his disciples farewell as he, ascending, as he ascended to heaven, he gave them a commission. He said to them, All authority in heaven and earth are given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. As we go from here, we hear afresh the commission of God in our lives, that special mission for which God has called each of us by name. And as we go, let us pray for God's powerful blessing to be upon us as we seek to follow through with that commission. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Cheers.